Hey guys, uh, tonight we are looking at the Shaw Concepts PCP, which I believe is plate carrier pack. Uh, so this is his uh, version of a, an assault pack, a plate carrier mounted assault pack. Uh, you'll notice there are no zips or molly attachment on the back, so you either use the shoulder straps in standalone mode, or you uh, pop a couple buckles and mount a couple side release buckles on your carrier and use it as a uh, quasi-direct mount self-access pack. Uh, so similar to the, uh, the old Tactical Tailor Mil-Spec Monkey uh, assault packs or somewhat like the AVS-1000 uh, and a little bit like the, the first spear uh, VEP, although I think this is done better than the VEP. All, all of those are done better better than the VEP in my opinion. Uh, but this is a, a totally viable option. Uh, it has uh, good feedback out there from, from other folks in the community, so I won't, I won't beat it to death too much, but I'll run you through the features in video form because I don't know that I've seen that done anywhere other than uh, Shaw's page. And uh, I think he does a good job covering it, but we'll, we'll get it all in one spot without any flashy marketing hype. Um, not that there's anything wrong with that. It'll, it'll much less likely to put you to sleep than my videos. But let's get on the table and take a look at it. All right, guys. So looking at this uh, Shaw Concepts PCP here, I've got a, a sappy stand in just so you can see the rough size of this. So this is mimicking a uh, medium sappy. And uh, you can see the footprint is, is more or less uh, exactly the... Uh, the sappy there. You've got no more than than an inch of overhang top and bottom and the sides just because this thing is flat looks like there's some overhang but it's really more or less cut uh, straight to the width of a sappy. All right um, looking at this thing in more detail so we'll start with the back because uh, it's it's a little interesting how he did the straps I think it's kind of cool. Um, so there's no hardware to change on the actual pack, whether you're using it in standalone mode with traditional uh, backpack straps or uh, direct mounted to your plate carrier. Uh, so he does send a little uh, goodie bag with uh, some parts and pieces here. So what you've got in here are two pairs of uh, kind of the the QD uh, field release or field repair buckles, side release buckles um, with these these gated um, connections here. I'm not as big of a fan of those as I am true repair buckles, but I understand that these are significantly easier to mount and to remove as needed. So no real complaints there. Uh, they're, they're plenty strong. Uh, there's there's always the, the small possibility though that these get uh, bumped and and disconnected. Uh, it, small possibility, uh, but they are slightly less secure than, than true field repair buckles. Uh, and then these um, kind of T-bar uh, setups here. So if you don't have a good place to to mount the buckle, you can thread this into some molly and and create a mounting point. Uh, I don't. I don't think you would need these on on too many options. These things should pop right on to just about anything you got. Um, if you have uh, horizontal molly on the front of your plate bag, uh, that might be where you need to use these. You would you would run it through the molly and then clip this onto it as your your vertical attachment point. And that's assuming that you're your plate carrier has no uh, vertical webbing sewn onto it. Uh, so if you only had traditional molly on the front of your, your setup, right? Um, which means that any, any plate carrier you, you might have that has any molly on the front of it and any semblance of molly on the cummerbund or even all the way up at the edge of the plate bag if you needed to, should work with the, the pack. You may have varying levels of success depending on how far forward or backwards you need to mount the uh, side attachments. 
as well as how far up and down you need to mount the uh, over over the shoulder portion. All right, so I you know brainstorming what may or may not play well with this. If you are a big fan of the ANA Tactical uh, C cucumber buns with the elastic cells and the the hybrid Molly towards the back. You may find that you're reaching pretty far to get to these side release buckles on the sides, uh, but there are ways around that. You could um, find a way to mount this directly to the front plate bag and then have a pretty long side strap, uh, which may or may not come into a little bit less uh, stability with this thing swaying side to side. You just have to play around with it. Uh, other things that might uh, get in the way is if you, for whatever reason, need a lot of pouches on on your cummerbund. Uh, per perhaps you got like unit SOP for an IFAC on on the side of your cummerbund or something like that. You're either going to need to run the the straps over the top of that, or under uh, the pouch on that one side, and know that you're only going to self access by swinging the other direction, which is totally viable. Um, so if you had to have like a full blown JFAC, we'll say on the left side of your setup, you would you would fix mount essentially the left side of this, and then you would always disconnect it on the right and swing it around to the left, which should work out uh, okay um, if if you need to. <clears throat> Same thing with the top straps. If you have anything goofy going on with like heavy cable management on on your chest. Uh, you may find yourself, even though these are both attached with side release buckles, uh, essentially fix mounting one side so that you can run your cables on top of that and not worry about tangling anything up and then disconnect the other side and swing it that way. So there may be a little bit of trial and error with actually mounting this thing, but the, the kind of four side release buckle mounting scheme has been done enough times in the past that I think it's it's proven if that's what you need to do to get a self-access pack. Um, some other interesting things about how this mounts, it wasn't crazy intuitive even after reading uh, Shaw's breakdown on this on the website, but this Tweave uh, shoulder strap cover here hides some, some strap adjustment inside of it that is not crazy obvious. Um, so if you if you pull down the top here, you can see there is uh, a D-ring with a couple layers of webbing. No obvious adjustment there. And then if you slide it up, uh, you have this, this tri-glide here, but it's still not crazy obvious. Uh, so if you need to use this in standalone mode, you are going to pay out slack to remove the doubled up portion and and make your shoulder strap longer and then you'll just have to fish this tweave over the tri-glide there which is not hard to do at all but i'm not going to do it right now so that we can we can readjust it as needed but you essentially uh get half again as much distance as you had when you started if you need longer straps and then if you had this in standalone mode and you decide that you want a direct mount, you just do the opposite where you you pay out that, that slack and uh, allow it to find its way back into the shoulder strap. Uh, so it's not quite as smooth. Uh, he, he references popular two-point sling designs as kind of the inspiration here. So it's not quite as smooth as the adjustment on something like a Vickers, but it is very similar in function. It just takes a little bit more doing because of the tweave there. Uh, the tweave is also concealing some hypalon foam there, uh, which gives you some padding on these straps. These are very comfortable straps for what they are. Uh, I'd, I'd put them right up there with how much I enjoy the old Blue Force Gear uh, DAP pack, uh, DAP micro assault pack straps. Very, very simple, minimal bulk, but very comfortable for what they are. I think Shaw did a fantastic job on the amount of padding, the amount of bulk, and then kind of hiding the adjustment there. So the rest of the adjustment as needed can come out of the side straps here. But I would, I'm under the impression, and I'd have to play around with it a little bit more, 
that if you had the side straps dialed in so they were kind of connected where the, where releasing them on the sides of your plate carrier would work, I don't think you would have to adjust those at all to switch to standalone. You would just have to add slack in the shoulder strap, which I think is, is a win. And if you did need to, it would be pretty minimal uh, and you have plenty of tail there to use. Uh, if for whatever reason you needed to remove these uh, straps, you absolutely can. They're just kind of larks headed onto that D-ring there. Um, and those are, are removable if you need to. Or uh, if, let's say, you were doing something crazy in training and somebody decided that they needed to cut this, this side strap off of you for whatever reason, you could easily replace it because it's not hard mounted to the pack. Uh, on either end, uh, and you could very easily get a replacement strap made for you if you needed to. I would not do the same thing on these straps, but uh, I would imagine that, you know, if worst case, if somebody had to cut this shoulder strap off of you, you could reach out to Shaw and he could probably make you a replacement. I don't know how easy it would be to mount that, um, and it may not be functionally the same because this looks like a fixed loop, but I think you could do it if you had to. All right, so that's, that's kind of beating the mounting to death without actually running through donning and doffing on a plate carrier, but it, it's, it's very intuitive once you get it set up on your, on your rig. All right, moving on to the actual contents of the pack uh, and the layout and what people are probably more curious about. All right, so uh, you do have two compression straps that are uh, not fixed, so if you're always running this thing full, like you've got some sniffle gear in it that takes up all the volume and isn't crazy heavy and you don't need to re restrain it at all, you can absolutely remove those compression straps very easily and you're left with minimal hardware behind. Uh, so we'll, we'll pop those open and get those out of the way. They're, they're compression straps, there's not much more to say about it. All right, so the side of the pack, you have two full columns of molly. Uh, running the length of the pack, which is all laser cut. So if you if you don't need it, it's not really in the way. And if you do need it, it's fully functional. Uh, what is a little interesting to me is that you can't access the, the top of this. It is sewn up there, which really only affects that, that top row, uh, but it does prevent you from from running any anything wider than an inch, really, uh, down that channel if you needed to. So. Um, if you really wanted to, and if you needed to, for whatever reason, I think you could probably pop that stitching and you could fit like a breech pen down here. Um, I don't necessarily know that I would recommend that, but popping that stitch in, stitching shouldn't ruin the structural integrity of anything too much. Uh, so if you wanted to, you know, stick two breech pens down the side of here, I think you could do that. For sure on this outer column, it's just a little bit wider than this back column. Uh, and I, th I think that would work out all right. Uh, but if you need, you know, radios or water bottles, or maybe you're using it as a medic pack and you want to lash a couple of tourniquets on there or whatever, uh, you've got plenty of, of real estate to do that running the full length or, or parachute flare pouches, whatever you need to, right? <clears throat> um, so that, that goes to show kind of the, the volume of this thing. It's essentially a, a sappy footprint times, you know, three, three and a half inches in, in depth, and that gives you your volume, which I think Shaw listed on there as nine liters on their website, which seems a little uh, conservative, but uh, it's not a it's not a, a large pack by any means. Okay. Opening up this main compartment here, it is double zippers, uh, which is nice, so you can stage those wherever around the perimeter that you need to, uh, and then it is almost fully velcro lined so you've got uh six inches it looks like a velcro uh down the center line on each side uh, so if you needed uh velcro mount pouches you could absolutely do that if you're trying to go something like a uh, three wide m4 pouch you might run into issues with the sides of it flapping a little bit but it's contained in the pack so it shouldn't move anywhere vertically or or fall off it'll just be a little loose uh, Shaw also referenced, and I didn't, I, I didn't 
check the, I forgot to check the website, that there would be a Tegris uh, breaching tool sleeve liner. So if you needed to run breaching tools in here, there is a full width pass through, which I'll show you in a little bit, but he does reference that there's a liner for this pocket. So you won't wear out your pack with breaching tools. Otherwise you do have that sleeve there for hydration if you need it. Uh, it is not wide enough to actually fit armor. So if you were running this with a, a chest rig or something like that, you could not fit an armor panel in there. But you could, if you wanted to, for whatever reason, put it internal in the bag. I, I don't necessarily know that I would recommend that. Um, but if you were doing something like you had the, uh, the Tracer Tactical um, plate bags and you just wanted to store those in here for whatever reason, you could absolutely do that. There is room uh, and you could fit two of those without any drama. Uh, we'll show you the, the pass through on top. I think it's really smart the way Shaw did this. So there is a G hook here um, with room to pay out slack as needed. So if you had a lot of stuff coming out the top of this bag, you had breaching tools, uh, antennas, hydration core uh, tubes, whatever. Uh, he has this strap here to take tension off the zipper as needed and also work as a divider. So if you had, um, <clears throat> you know, two tools in here, it would keep them from shifting side to side more than needed. Um, and if you don't need all of that opening, he has this, uh, this bar on here that you can interface with the other zipper pull and kind of lock in uh, a smaller gap on the zipper as needed. <clears throat> so I, I think the way he did that opening is really smart. He gives you about as much flexibility as possible while ensuring that you're not going to set yourself up for failure with, with blowing out that zipper. Um, and then you can, you can tension this as needed. If you had bolt cutters in here and you were trying to keep them from shifting side to side, you can pop that off and then retrieve your, your bolt cutters pretty easy. Uh, so that's the, the main compartment. Uh, there's nothing, nothing else really noteworthy on there. There's no, there are drainage holes. So there's two grommets on the bottom. Um, and there's, there's nothing um, on the sides for, for lashing or anything like that. Um, there's also no um, like fixed hydration pass through on the top of this. So you, you are going to use that zipper. So if, um, if you're in a really rainy climate or something like that, you do need to be aware that you're, you're going to create uh, probably a larger opening for water to, to enter your bag than you intended to. Uh, no free lunches. But <clears throat> zipping that up, we'll get that main compartment out of the way. And then you have two GP pockets here. Uh, so the top one does have a loop field on it. Uh, not quite clamshell there, uh, but it does have a good size Velcro lining. Again, looks like six inches wide and a tie down point for sensitive equipment or just, you know, stuff you don't want to lose. Uh, no Velcro on the outer face, which I think is fine. It's not, not nearly as rigid for, for any kind of load bearing purpose there. Um, maybe some elastic loops would have, would have been nice, but this is already... A $325 pack and, and any other features that you add are just going to drive that price up higher. Uh, and then your lower pocket here is again a half clamshell, again Velcro lined. And if we throw in a 30 round mag, even with the base plate, we don't do too bad closing up. So I, I would imagine you could fit 30 round mags all the way across here without uh, a base plate and be able to zip that up just fine. Um, so if you needed a lot of a lot of extra ammo or ordnance or whatever, you should be able to fit it in here pretty well. Um, all told, I think it's I think it's I mean it's very well made. Shaw stuff uh, it's it's really hard to hit on any of the quality on Shaw stuff. Uh, it feels like 500 denier throughout. Uh, except for the, you know, where the laser cutting is, that's your, your fancier, I think, squadron uh, fabric. 
but it's a very lightweight pack. There is a little bit of uh, padding on the back that I forgot to mention. I don't know if I can really tell how thick that is. Let's see here. And it doesn't appear to be removable anywhere. It is sewn in there. Uh, it's it's not it's not anything to to complain about. It's not it's not thick, but it's definitely not paper thin. Like there's some some good padding there. So I wouldn't worry about even if you didn't have a plate carrier on, uh, anything really poking you in the back with that padding. Um, I think I think it's very well designed. I don't think there's too many features that you'll find it lacking uh, without being oddly specific in your needs. Um, so, you know, if, if you wanted a dedicated medical bag, uh, you might be missing or wanting for some features. Uh, if you wanted a dedicated like tool bag for for working with ordnance again you might find yourself lacking for some things but as a kind of doing his best to appease everybody's needs in what can very quickly become a very expensive bag i think shaw did a really good job on this and from my initial impressions i'm not seeing anything uh standing out as immediately like oh i would i would really want that thing uh the velcro lining in all of the pockets gives you plenty of options to make up for for anything that you might be wanting for uh i think the size i think for being a a plate carrier pack the size is very well done uh it will it should um kind of squash the the plate overhang conversation pretty well uh, it's it's very very minimal top and bottom as we kind of already showed uh, so those weirdos that freak out about bags hanging down below their their back plate uh, really don't have anything to complain about here I think it's modular where modularity counts and it's simple where um, streamlining production counts so good job Shaw I think I think you did a really good job on this three hundred twenty five dollars is is no easy pill to swallow uh, but it's a quality made american made backpack um, with a lot of options so uh, thanks for your time guys hopefully if you were looking at this thing you learned a little bit more about it and uh, hopefully i'll get my hands on the plate carrier panel soon uh, to experiment with what that can do but thanks guys